four two a five which is brilliant serenity thank you for joining really appreciate you thank you for joining the cast really appreciate it thank you thank you thank you lots of people joining joe that's what i like to see hello as well youtube's just clicked in podcast people should join us as well joe ryan lee inspiration nation so what are we talking about this week joe to get people inspired this week we are talking about five regrets that are dying and a regret was or is i wish i'd stayed in touch with my friends i'm just going to put the book just for the youtube youtube and the uh and TikTok. So that's the subject. So I don't know about you two. All I can tell you is about my friends is that I don't really have that many friends, really. You, know, you could probably count them on one hand, the ones that I stay in touch with a lot. So what what are your initial thoughts on this? So you fast forward, look, talk about the lens, fast forward to the end of your life. And, you know, thinking about your friendship groups right now, is this a regret for either of you? Would it be a regret? I won't lie, Joe. Jose. I keep sp- flicking between Joe and Jose which I would say is confusing for people, but I'm pretty sure they can pick up on what we're doing. I just like technical hiccup there, so I didn't listen to the start of the title. But it's something to do with friends. What was it called again? Yeah, yeah. I wish I'd stayed in touch with my friends there is the go. regret. So, there you, go. Do you, you know, I always give you two thoughts on things. I like to, like to mix it up with two things. So I consider myself quite lucky that at my ripe old age of 41, I still have quite a few good close friends from different circles. So... There's a couple of people from school that I'm still in touch with. It was a long time now. My first job, job, hotel working, there's someone I'm in like daily contact with from there. He's a really close friend of mine. Um, there are then people from my first real job, Joe, where we work together, where there's a couple of people from there outside of you on the screen that I'm in touch with as well. And then people from where I am currently as well, that part of a, a friendship circle. So not huge, huge numbers, but I feel I've kept hold of quite a few people. And sometimes I do feel bad because i want to keep in contact with people more or add to that number i think oh, i've not spoke to that person for ages but they have to be realistic that there's only so many hours in the day there's only only so much time i can give to people and i wish i did have more time but at the same point i feel very blessed that i think i have quite a few good friends from different places over the year that you know some i talk to hardly ever but when we talk it's like we talked yesterday and some i talk to literally every single day no, I don't think so if I'm going to stand back and look at my life, but yes, because I feel like there's always more you can do. Well, I mean, so if you're at the end of your life, if you're on your deathbed, you're your last breaths, and you thought about this, is is it a regret? I don't think it's a regret. I just think I'm me and always think I can do more. So it's a kind of regret? Ish, maybe. Because it's like, I, you know, it's that whole thing, isn't it, about, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I told you like, two answers. I like to contradict myself, keep it interesting. Yeah, it's, it's, it is interesting, though, isn't it? Because when I asked you the question, if you were actually on your deathbed, you know, would you regret it? So yeah, I, it's, it's, I, you know, and you said, you know, I wish I'd, you know, you know, wish I had more time, which is one of those things, isn't it? Which we all wish we had more time. That's the thing, isn't That's it? That's it. Right. Is anything? Go on. Sorry, Liz. Anything else you want to add? That I, I only that I probably waste time talking to people like you where I don't need to as well. But that's just me doing my. Thanks, you know, I told you wow. my love language. Oh, here we go. Is this the, this from last week? We came from last it. week. The harsher so it is, the Joe, the more this, I actually like you. This is the affection. The more abuse you get from Lee, the more affection it is. So it's like a it's like a scale. Um, it's lovely. Ryan, is there anything from you on this one? I don't think I will regret my friendship circle or, or lack of it or bolster of it, depending on what way you view that situation. I can see I can see both sides as to why you would or perhaps why you wouldn't. I think from from my perspective, as long as the connections you have with people are legitimate and strong and have things that that you rely on and you don't need more from friends so that you would maybe get if you had a bigger circle of friends, then I think that it's okay. Some people are naturally better at having big friendship groups and others are naturally better and survive on a smaller friendship group. It's just, just the way that, that things are, you know, especially you know, in, in my view anyway. I don't think there's a right or wrong answer either of this how do you feel on it personally i'll throw joe's question he gave to me you know fast forward like 100 years when you're on your deathbed will you think oh i wish i'd have spent more time with people or kept in touch with people you're like no i got that right for me if i died tomorrow then no i think i'd be um i think i'd be content i think i have good friends from similarly to you maybe not from maybe not from places like work or 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 school but the, the friendships i do have i think are strong enough and deep enough for me to be happy with with what they are and how they are could i do more with the friends i do have i mean yeah but that's going by going by your your book lee 
so could you and, and probably so could everyone right i think I, I think i'm content with where i am because i think everyone can do more not against where i am either Jose, like what about you with your own question yeah do you know what do you know what it's the, it's the strangest thing because i don't have many friends i mean i could probably count them on one hand you know the friends that, that you know i have connections with like like deep like i think you said it ryan deep connections with before we started this podcast, before we came on to the podcast, in fact, I was reading that regret and I was thinking, and I was thinking about the question I asked you about if I was on my deathbed. And there are a couple of people like you, Lee, where I haven't reached out for a very long time. So what I did is I pulled out my phone and I just sent a message to say, how are you? And how are your family? And I've just done that right now. As I say, I'll probably count them on one, probably four, five friends probably and we don't speak that often and we should speak well i suppose we should speak more but it sort of talks about like usually about the time but actually when i fast forward to my life if i died tomorrow at least i now i've reached out and i said how are you and i've done it and i think this for me is something that i probably would regret if i died tomorrow Got four, two, a five, which is brilliant. Serenity, thank you for joining. Really appreciate you. Thank you for joining the cast. Really appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Lots of people joining, Joe. That's what I like to see. Hello as well. YouTube's just clicked in. Podcast people should join us as well. Joe, Ryan, Lee, Inspiration Nation. So what are we talking about this week, Joe, to get people inspired? This week, we are talking about five regrets that are dying. And a regret was, or is... I wish I'd stayed in touch with my friends. I'm just going to put the book just for the YouTube, YouTube and the uh, and TikTok. So that's the subject. So I don't know about you two. All I can tell you is about my friends is that I don't really have that many friends, really. Um, you, know, you could probably count them on one hand, the ones that I stay in touch with a lot. So what do, what are your initial thoughts on this? So you fast forward, talk about the lens, fast forward into your life and you know, thinking about your friendship groups right now, is this a regret for either of you? Would it be a regret? I won't lie, Joe. Jose. I keep split flicking between Joe and Jose, which I would say is confusing for people, but I'm pretty sure they can pick up on what we're doing. Um, I just like technical hiccup there, so I didn't listen to the start of the title. But it's something to do with friends. What was it called again? Yeah. Yeah, I wish I'd stayed in touch with my friends as the go. regret. So, there you go. You know, I always give you two thoughts on these. I like to like to mix it up with two things. So, I I consider myself quite lucky that at my ripe old age of forty one, I still have quite a few good close friends from different circles. So, there's a couple of people from school that I'm still in touch with. It was a long time now. My first job, job, hotel working. There's someone I'm in like daily contact with from there. A really close friend of mine. Um, there are then people from my first real job, Joe, where we work together, where there's a couple of people from there outside of you on the screen that I'm in touch with as well. Um, and then people from where I am currently as well, that part of a, a friendship circle. So not huge, huge numbers, but I feel I've kept hold of quite a few people. And sometimes I do feel bad because I want to keep in contact with people more or add to that number. I think, oh, I've not spoke to that person for ages. But they have to be realistic that there's only so many hours in the day. There's only, only so much time I can give to people. And I wish I did have more time. But at the same point, I feel very blessed that I think I have quite a few good friends from different places over the year that, you know, some I talk to hardly ever. But when we talk, it's like we talked yesterday. And some I talk to literally every single day. So... No, I don't think so if I'm going to stand back and look at my life. But yes, because I feel like there's always more you can do. Well, I mean, so if you are at the end of your life, if you're on your deathbed, you are your last breaths and you thought about this. Is, is it a regret? I don't think it's a regret. I just think I'm me and always think I can do more. OK, so it's a kind of regret ish maybe because it's like i you know it's that whole thing isn't it about yeah 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 I told you like, two answers i like to contradict myself keep it interesting yeah it's, it's it is interesting though isn't it because when i asked you the question if you were well, actually on your deathbed you know would you regret it so yeah i 
it's, it's, I, you know, and you said, you know, I wish I'd, you know, you know, I wish I had more time, which is one of those things, isn't it? Which we all wish we had more time. That's the thing, isn't That's it? That's it. Ryan, is anything, go on, sorry, Liz, anything else you want to add? That I, only impossible. that I probably waste time talking to people like you where I don't need to as well, but that's just me doing my, Thanks, you know, I told you, wow. my love language. Oh, here we go. Is this, the, this from last week? We came this from last it. week. The harsher this is it the is, Joe, the more this, I actually like you. This is the affection. The more abuse <laughs> you get from Lee, the more affection it is. So it's like a, it's like a scale. Um, it's lovely. Ryan, is there anything from you on this one? Um, I don't think I will regret my friendship circle or, or lack of it or bolster of it, depending on what way you view that situation. Um, I can see I can see both sides as to why you would or perhaps why you wouldn't. Um, I think from, from my perspective, as long as the connections you have with people are legitimate and strong and have things that, that you rely on and you don't need more from friends so that you would maybe get if you had a bigger circle of friends and i think that it's okay some people are naturally better at having big friendship groups and others are naturally better and survive on a smaller friendship group it's just just the way that that things are you know um especially you know in, in my view anyway but um i don't think there's a right or wrong answer to either of this how do you feel on it personally? I'll throw Joe's question you gave to me. You know, How fast forward like 100 years when you're on your deathbed, will you think, oh, I wish I'd have spent more time with people or kept in touch with people? You're like, no, I got that right for me. If I died tomorrow, then no, I think I'd be, um, I think I'd be content. I think I have good friends from, similarly to you, maybe not from, maybe not from places like work or, or school, but the, the friendships I do have, I think are strong enough and deep enough for me to be happy with, with what they are and how they are. Um, could I do more with the friends I do have? I mean, yeah, but that's going by going by your, your book, Lee. So could you and probably so could everyone, right? Um, so I think, I, I think I'm content with where I am because I think everyone could do more, but I'm not, not against where I am either. Jose, like what about you with your own question? Yeah, do you know what? Do you know what? It's the, it's the strangest thing um, because I don't have many friends. I mean, I could probably count them on one hand. You know, the friends that you know that you know I have connections with, like like deep. Like I think you said it, Ryan. Deep connections with. Um, so before we started this podcast, before we came on to the podcast, in fact, I was reading that regret and I was thinking, and I was thinking about the question I asked you about if I was on my deathbed. And there are a couple of people like you, Lee, where I haven't reached out for a very long time. So what I did is I pulled out my phone and I just sent a message to say, how are you? And how are your family? And I've just done that right now. So as I say, I'll probably count them on one, probably four, five friends probably um and we don't speak that often and we should speak well i suppose we should speak more but it sort of talks about like usually about the time but actually when i fast forward to my life if i died tomorrow at least i now I, i've reached out and i said how are you and i've done it and i think this for me is something that i probably would regret if i died tomorrow but now having read that regret and done it i reached out and said how are you change yeah I've actually, yeah, I've actually changed that. But then I don't know what, you know, for me, and I'm being honest, I don't know what, what constitutes staying friends. Oh, actually, there's someone else, actually. We no, don't speak for, well, there's a, actually a friend of my beloved that we speak to and saying, not, don't speak for a long time. But when we catch up, it's like we never, time's not gone in anywhere. It's like you just fall into this natural discussion. It's like a couple of friends of mine where we just, catch up and we just fall into a routine and it's like we've never been away i don't know if you've found that with anybody but those are the friends that i think for me are the ones that i really love and that i just resonate with me and i suppose for me it's i don't have a lot of friends and um you know i class you as my friends but the friends oh, i do well, well, have, don't use us to bolster your number oh, <laughs> I, I i totally am um <laughs> but i have to have a connection with people otherwise i struggle with the friendship i can't have that i struggle with I don't know. Do you do you agree? There's there's friendships that are on the surface, like or like you're at work and you call that a friendship. Or would you call that an association? 
or would you call it friendship? Because actually, there's someone else actually just thinking it is off the top of my head. It's another person You're building that, that number. I I think that changes Literally. as you get older. I think, Joe. I think, yeah. I, I think as you because right. you you carry over your school mentality of it. I think mm. and as you're young, is you you have people you associate with and a big friendship group, but. There could be people in that friendship group that outside of what you do together, you don't know a single thing about them. And I had that, you know, it's much, much bigger group. And then as you get older, it gets smaller and smaller. And you, you keep in contact with the ones that you have that connection with. Normally people, you, you know, you share interests or you have something in common or you bond on a personality level. And they're the ones that maintain because you do have that connection. And you kind of, I suppose you value less the, value the right word? I don't know, but there's less of that social thing it's not like oh out every weekend big group of friends you know family comes in other things life changes and i think yeah the ones that resonate are the deep connections and i think you probably do have friends it could be at any age but you do have people you associate with and i just think the frame of that probably changes as you get a bit older i, I really like that because there, there, i don't know where i thought i think it might be a stoicism thing was it a, no it's actually it was actually jay shetty and everyone knows jay shetty well if you're in the self-development world jay shetty You'll know who he is. Just look him up. He's massive on Instagram. He's hugely successful. I think he he wrote a book, The Way of the Monk, I think, or something like that. No, that, that was I think that was Robin Sharma, the guy we did a load of episodes on. Anyway, Carl, long story short, he said there's friends for seasons and friends for life. There are friends that come into your life for a period of time, but they're not meant to be there for all time. Yeah. That's okay. And that's all right. It's like okay to have that. And then there's those friends that will always be with you in some way, shape, or form. And in fact, I just had a reply actually that to the friend that I have for life. Actually, they were they were my best man at my wedding, and I don't near it. This is probably the regret that I have. I don't near enough reach out enough. So my commitment is going to be at least I'm going to be reaching out more often. I am going to be reaching out. That's good. I like that. I like that that change has happened right here live on the. Well, yeah. Well, well, I wanted to do it because I actually read it. I thought I wanted to ask myself that question, so that's why I did it, and I thought. I need to do more of that because that's not something I want to have when I do come into my life. Is that, who knows? I don't know how my life will end, right? It might be really painful. I don't have much time to think about it. But if I'm like, if it's like a long illness or you have time to reflect, I don't want that thought to be coming to me to say, well, do you know, I wish I'd reached out to Bob, but they've gone, they, they've died already, right? Um, that's too late then because they could die. Of course, the person, your friend could die. Uh, so, you know, I really think this is so important. Um, but yeah, and that, and I just want to sort of think that it's okay to have friends for seasons and friends for life. And, you know, when we talk about friendship, I know we've got Facebook friends and things like that. I'm not really a big Facebook fan but at all, so I don't really do that at all. But I don't know. What's your view on Facebook friends? If you all your on all your do you to, I don't know if you two use Facebook. I don't use it virt I virtually don't use it. One of the platforms I don't really use at all. But if you were gonna do you use Facebook is the first question. The second version, if you if you do use it quite a bit, all the friends you have on there, are they your friends? As I, you would define them. I you as in I well I look at it and I scroll for every day. And in fact it's more there's a lot of pages I follow that throw news and entertainment things and stuff my way than anything else and i've got people on there but i would say and there's friends i have in the real world and family i see quite often who are on there interact with and there's there's other people who i don't and i i wouldn't refer to face as facebook friends so much but i do like the way that there's people that i'm not in reg in touch with regularly but were obviously important to me at some point in my life and I can always keep tabs on what they're doing. I can see what they're doing. I'm aware of them, they're aware of me. So I think it's nice. It's almost like keeping in touch without keeping in touch where you don't have the time to because you can't literally speak to 100 people every week. So I, I wouldn't frame it as Facebook friends because actually they're all people that I did know at some point and we might have fallen out of touch for whatever reason, but it's quite nice to still have a little window into their life every so often. And there is, like crazy. where you said, friends for a season. There's some people on there who, for periods of time, for whatever reason, I was really close with and spent a lot of time together, but then you drift and you go in different directions. And especially with those people that, for a period, it was really close, it's really nice to kind of still have that that link without, you know, it's, it's, it's a passive link, if you like. You don't have to do anything mm. to maintain it. So I like that aspect of it, but it's very much people that fall in that friends for a season are a big number of people on there that I, you know, I did know, but whatever the link was just isn't there anymore, but it's it's really nice mm. to have it there. Yeah, I just reminded someone else actually, I need to reach yeah, out. Look at this, this list, you're, you're probably onto two hands now, Joe, I reckon. Maybe I've, a foot It's on well. my second hand, I think, because, yeah, yeah, I'm probably my second hand, actually. 
I do need to reach out. I'm going to send another message after this podcast. I think, you've also, got to, I think also you've got to consider what you class as a friend might not be what somebody else classes as a friend. Yeah. Somebody that somebody that you reach out to every six months or a year, they may class you as a friend. But in your book, Joe, that might be somebody that you consider an acquaintance. And, you know, that's yeah. the, these things differ based off of everything, really, don't they? So as long as... Yeah, I'd hope the ones that, like you said, I would hope the ones that I am friends with do think I'm friends with them because I think I'm I, I think by the time you get to a point and it's years down the line, you start to get a gauge for that and know that stuff, don't you? I yeah, mean, just, just I think it's almost clear, like... We're in, I reckon that we're in the obligation territory now is where more where it sits with us. Than okay, the affection's else. coming out now. We're definitely true friends right now. <laughs> so I just I just thought of this. So on, on the, like I said, sarcasm is a love language. My one of my siblings, because um, we're all we all speak quite a bit and we're all we're all quite close and everything. And one of them, the first time I half saw us interact together in person, she was like, "Do you two even like each other?" And I'm like, no, yeah, "Of course that's we the do." Point. I'm like, "That's that's, <laughs> that's how we that's how it's we the interact love language. as a family." <laughs> mm. Yeah, <laughs> which I think yeah, that, that frames how it how it works, Joe. So you should be pleased with all these bantery comments, Joe, because they're actually a high yeah. term of affection. Exactly. This is this is it, isn't it? This is the whole point of it. But yeah, anything out of that for you, uh, Ron? What about your? Have you got a few of you on the Facebook friends thing? He's like Facebook, um, you boomers. Have I got a view? I, I mean, most of mine are still from school or other walks of life. But I suppose, I suppose the way I view social media will be different to the way you view social media as well, just because we're you know from different times, and, you know, different generations. Um, for me. I view social media a bit like how you might view a morning newspaper if you were of that of a previous generation. I'm not trying to call you a morning newspaper. You know what I mean? It's it's just where you get information and info on, you know, people that as Lee says were important to you at some point. Where we used to huddle around the radio gram and listen for the daily updates, that's what <laughs> You know what I mean. But yes. Um I th that as more... I said, Facebook really fulfills that need for me as well. The same as do the same. Facebook and Twitter are my two main ones, but both of them are they're entertainment. They, I, you know, you build your own algorithm, like Joe says, and they're full of yeah. lots of things that interest me. Predominantly, yeah. wrestling and nerdy history stuff won't surprise you, but they they both fulfil that and they push a lot of stuff like that to me in my direction. But then also, like I said, there's a keeping in touch thing. But ten years ago, the keeping in touch element wouldn't have been there because. I hadn't so much. Yeah, hadn't had so no much reason, time yeah. apart from people to realise that yeah. you need to keep in touch with them. So I yeah. think that would change, but it's not because we're old and are used to telegrams and whatever else like that. I mean, Joe is obviously, but no, it's, it's, I'm it's young, pigeon mail. I'm young pigeon and cool mail, like you Ryan, young and cool. <laughs> For me, it's pigeon mail or sending the ravens. That's mine. <laughs> sending the ravens. Sending the ravens. But yeah, I, th I just think it's slightly different. Like mm -hmm. I use. Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, TikTok, and I try not follow the same people on every platform because they just post the same stuff. So, you know, at that point, what's what's the point? Um, you're just seeing the same thing. But as Lee says, you feed your own algorithm with things like that. So it's just that's all it is, really. There's a real. I, I clicked on Sank by accident. This isn't a blue story, by the way, just in case you get worried. When it's you <laughs> you don't put a certificate 18 on this. No, no, no. But it's like one of those videos where someone, oh, sort of like falls off a cliff or something. It even makes me cringe when I say it. And suddenly I'm getting all these type of look what we caught and see. And I'm like, I, I need to get these off now. I don't want them on my thing anymore. And you kind of, I don't know how you de algorithm yourself from some things, but I'm not a fan of those things. Need to get back to uh, this, is, this is bit. what London looked like in the 1900s or something like that. They're my favourite videos. Did I break up a bit there? You did yeah, well for me. Yeah. yeah, for me you did. You froze yeah. for me as well. Sorry, everyone out there, listener land and YouTube land. That was a brief technical glitch. We are back to full strength now. Yeah, it's really, it was really interesting you saying about your family as being friends, which is interesting, I think, to me. Because you referenced your family and how you interacted with them. And it's really interesting because... Because with uh, with my sister, for instance, we we have a really deep connection, and I'd also class my my sister as well as my sibling as my friend, like re, you know one of my best friends. In fact, my, my wife is also one of my best friends. But is that a right? Re, is that again? Is that something we could? Is that can we put that in the same boat? Can we? Yeah, can we? I think you can. I yeah. think you can. The, these people that you're you build relationships with don't just have to be romantic. You have to have shared interests and like people's views and traits and personalities and. All these other things that's no different than being a friend the only difference to being a friend is that you're not attracted to them 
or in love with them, I guess, would be how I view that. Yeah, I agree. I don't know, I don't know I th- about you guys. Yeah, I think if I'm going to say Joe there, Jose, I've got to keep on brand. Jose, I agree 100%. I think that, for, and for me personally, they both fall into that bracket. And actually, I think, again, the the older you get, the more you start to appreciate that. I think you can maybe take it for granted when you're younger. Yeah. Or for me, obviously, everyone realises things at different paces, but that was what would be what I say for my experience. Yeah, and that's the thing, isn't it? I think because I say with my sister, we have a you know, since my mum passed away, we we've really we've you know we we did have a period where we didn't communicate much because we you know it's, it's almost like that bit about the friends, isn't it? Where we connect, you know, we connect, and when we connect, we'd speak for hours, like literally, you know, pick up where we left off. But since my mum passed away, we've been staying in touch a lot, lot more. Yeah, and and actually, the, the connections deepened since that, but obviously. It's most likely because of the passing of my mum, I suspect. But I definitely class my sister as a as a dear friend, and my my, my beloved, my wife as as a dear friend. Um, we we like similar things, like Ryan was saying. We like similar things. We like going out to eat, all those sort of things. Of course, we have a little quarrel now and then, even after twenty five years. Um, but it's all like very amicable. We all sort it out, right? But yeah, so I just I just wondering about that. So when I said I've got, if if, if we can class like family as friends, then for me. I've got more than, I've got more than um, five friends. I think more than one had. They got two, at least two. Um, so yeah, and I suppose that going on the other side, I suppose there can be family who you don't think are your friends. I suppose. I suppose there's that end, isn't there? There's, there, I suppose yeah, there's people out there where, all because they're family, they don't necessarily get on right. And, and I, I think suppose they're not. People will have some like that. There's some people who have lots like that. Some who might have everyone mm. like that. It's, it's different for everyone. So I think if you can class people in that bracket then i think you know i think you're lucky that you've got that connection that exists anyway and then actually you then can foster those relationships off the back of it yeah yeah i agree and and i think you're right i think you're talking about commonalities and in fact in the book it talks about the, the person who's dying actually had um friends had a friendship group but the connect the only connection they had is that we're drinking but then when they were coming to the life, they recognised that they weren't really the true friends and they sort of always neglected the friends that they really did have as friends, but they, they sort of went to the, the the drinking group. And I suppose there's a real good lesson in that. Isn't it? A, I think there's a good lesson in that for me, as in, I suppose if you've got a friend connection, is it a true friend and is the connection healthy for you? So that's probably quite difficult if you've got an emotional attachment to see it from a perspective of, like I suppose from their, their point of view, the person who was passing away only realised that when they were passing away, right? Like, that's a really interesting thing for me because who you might think are your friends may not necessarily be your friends. You're just staying friends with them because of a commonality which may not necessarily mean you're friends, yeah. which I think is really interesting and, and maybe we should really think about our friendships and whether they're adding value or are we keeping friends just because it's we don't want to be lonely because, but, but then should we be trying to connect with people where we have these deep connections you know i'm just thinking about that so i'm just really thinking out my thoughts out loud any thoughts on any of that i can see how that can happen i've heard hmm. versions of that sort of situation before and i think it's tough because actually you might like you said realize you only have this one thing if you remove that you'll all drift apart or not have anything to talk about what whatever it is but i don't know whilst that commonality exists and if you spend a lot of time is that not you know that could be a positive thing still it, you know it might still add value might still get lots of enjoyment from it i think it's it's real individual i think as to what i think ryan referenced this sort of thing at the start but what what does friendship mean to you and what are you looking to get from something or what can you offer to people and i think sometimes that situation would meet needs and other times it wouldn't yeah and also i think you've got to have the friendship this is what listening to you there the friendship has got to you've got to try and look at it from perspective is it like healthy i yeah. suppose is it you're holding on to that relationship i suppose it's a bit like i suppose you know your friendship is not love right but it's almost like you get you could get into a habit of it but it, you know those you know i suspect we've all had friends in the past that have been super negative and well i talked about my friend but way in the past didn't i, I talked about a friend that really put me down yes like, and i think that's, that's really more friend, the thing right? to be concerned with isn't so much right? how you know how deep or how broad are your connections but are the you know are these people supporting you? Are they empowering you? Are they helping you relax? Whatever the thing is, or actually are these people sucking the life out of you one way or another and, and keeping you down? And 
again that that will be different for everybody and it's very situational but i think that's that's the thing to be more wary of i think than anything else and it's really difficult well i found it difficult i'm not saying young people can't analyze their friendships of course they can but i was the age where i wasn't that aware of the impact of that right till now until i became more fully aware right but i'm not saying as i say i'm not saying young people cannot be aware but i think this is the message for me is we have to be aware of what the friendship's doing for us and does it help you know does it is it healthy i suppose is one but i mean there's a lot of different there's a lot of um scope in healthy isn't it? what defines it's a healthy, it. and healthy it's always, friendship it's always yeah. different when you're in the bubble as opposed to outside the yeah. bubble that's yeah. it's the emotion isn't it because i didn't realize when i was in the bubble that it was that bad yeah it's only when you know we'd, we'd gone our separate ways we'd, we you know we'd gone separate ways and then i heard that they passed away but when they passed away it's really interesting and and because when I reflect back on that relationship, although I, I suppose, did I feel bad? I'm not sure whether I feel bad about it. And I don't know whether I should feel bad about it. Someone passing away. But for me, I don't, you know, they didn't really, they didn't really encourage me. So do I feel bad? I don't know if I do. And I still don't know. I still, you know, I'm still, I, I don't, I suppose I don't want to, I don't want to come across as not caring. But when I look back at that relationship, I don't think it was that healthy. There's no should with that either, Joe. I mean, I've, you know, anyone who's listened to this for more than five minutes can know that you are a, you know, a caring and well-intentioned person, and you you feel what you feel. There's no obligation either way. Sometimes things you say, oh, that should do. There's other times where there's things that I'm not that are sad, but I'm not connected to in any way, and they've hit me really hard. It's you know, it's all it's all very individual, I think. So I wouldn't question those those sorts of well, things. Do you know what? This is part of really interesting for me because I worked with a lady. She was absolutely lovely. And, I, and I, I, I'd love to mention their name, but I, I don't have permission from their, their daughters. But this person, I, it was my, my very first job. And this person was a lot older than me. Like, I would say, well, I was probably in my 20s and they were probably in their mid 50s, coming to late 60s. So we were like 30, 40 years, is that something like that? Anyway, something like that. And we had, it was brilliant. It was, it was just like, do you know when you meet someone? And you just like kindred spirits. Like it doesn't matter about the age. You just you just connect. And it was just weird. Anyway, I heard that they died, and I had the iPad and I was looking up and I was scrolling and I remember this, this. And I was scrolling and I got a message from one of their daughters and said, "Oh, you know, did you know? You know, my mum passed away." And I'm like, it, like this is when it hit me that this was a real true friendship, although I hadn't spoken for ages. Tears just come strolling down and actually on the iPad I felt even now I can still feel that emotion because they did have a big impact on my life. But we didn't speak, you know. After I left that place of work, we connected a few times, we didn't really connect. Um so I don't know whether that's is that a regret or is that that I just really cared for them and that's how it came out. But even then I still feel that tinge of sadness even now. Um to say, you know, that person was really lovely to me and um they were well intentioned. We still always go on lunch breaks and it was a lovely a lovely relationship actually um and my wife would know who i'm talking about what she used to talk about her when uh when when i came home so anyway i appreciate I think we've come to the... us, Joe. we are it's just going to wrap us up there but that's really yeah, good yeah, go and you've mentioned that one before on here but i really wanted to let you talk through that again so i think that really fits with this episode but we will very quickly do some takeaways before we do that just everyone who's with us supporting us Follow us on social media at listen to n listen T-O-I-N. Put Jose Neuer Inspiration Nation into Google. And unlike Ryan, who doesn't follow people on every platform, follow Jose on every platform because he is on them. And check out inspirationnation.org.uk for everything to do with Inspiration Nation, merchandise, coaching service, Joe's newsletter. Sign up for that. It is awesome. I'm going to say each and every week, but whenever he sends it out. Um, and whatever you're listening, if you are watching on YouTube, if you are listening through podcast platform, if you're anywhere else, hit subscribe, hit the five star button, whatever it's got, leave us a review, all of that stuff really helps. Tell friends and family about us. And if you subscribe on either YouTube or TikTok, you will get notified when we are going live and you can join in with us as many, many people have given us, what, 500 plus likes on TikTok this week. We appreciate it. You can see us on YouTube and TikTok live. Right, Joe, take away for me, please. Okay, my takeaway from this is for me is two one what does the value bring of the relationship is it really think look think of it from a, a perspective of is it adding value to my life or sucking the energy out of my life 
you know, look at those relationships. And secondly, with the one that I think you raised, Lee, was um, family can be friends. I really like that. That's, those are my takeaways. I like That's it. it. Jose. No, you're Jose. Ryan. My God, <laughs> I'm all over the place. You're now Jose Time Ryan. to sign off. Jose Boniface. Uh, my takeaway would be that I think if I'm ever not happy with the type of friendships I have or the relations I have with people, then it's on me to change them and everybody else. Love that. And I will say, and I'm going to take a leaf out of your book, Jose, the real Jose, Jose Neuer, do not be afraid to reach out. Remember to check in, just like you did earlier. And I'm going to try and do it. Because every so often I'll think about doing it, especially when I'm in the car, if something pops in my head, and I'll, oh, I'll just check in with them. By the time I get to where I'm going, I've completely forgotten, and then I'll probably think it again in six months. So I'm going to take more action. That's what I think everyone should take away. For anyone you think is your real true friend, send a message straight away now after you listen to the podcast or I'll watched it. We'll do that. Just don't be expecting a message, guys, just to forewarn you. <laughs> and on that note, I will count us down. Three, two, one. Inspiration Nation. Inspiration Nation. Catch you guys, guys later. later. Let me know what your biggest takeaway is from this conversation. I'd love to know. Put it in the comments below and I'll respond to every single comment because that's the commitment I make to you in this community. Also, don't forget to subscribe right over here because we need you to build this Inspiration Nation community to get the podcast out there and to help other people for free. And also, don't forget to hit that bell right over here because if you hit that bell, then you're going to know when another video is going live. And don't forget to check out these videos right here next to me because those are other podcast episodes that can really help you out. I really, really appreciate it. And lastly, don't forget out to check the newsletter. The link is in the description below. That's where I can talk directly to you without through the YouTube, throughout the social, because you can have a direct communication channel with me through the email and you can get to know everything that's going on with Inspiration Nation, ask me questions and even give me suggestions on what you want us to talk about next. So I'd love to see you in the next video. So please click on those links. Please follow through. Please let's get this community building. I appreciate you. So until next time, I'll see you in the next video, Inspiration Nation, and I'll catch you guys later.